Istanbul, one of the world's most important cities for over 2,000 years, and one of the few major cities in two different continents. And even then, housing over 15 million people, it is the largest city in Europe, 10th largest in the world, and by far the largest in Turkey. It was the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire from its re-establishment in 330 AD until it was conquered by the Ottomans in 1453. From henceforth, it became the capital of the Ottoman Empire. With the Ottoman Empire gone since 1922, however, Istanbul no longer serves as the capital of the modern Republic of Turkey. That honor now goes to the city of Ankara. So why did Turkey decide to move its capital away from a city as big and as significant as Istanbul. Thanks to Curiosity Stream for helping support the channel. Let's go back in time a bit so we can see the full story. Istanbul, one of the world's most important cities. Okay, a bit further back than that. In 1453, after years of Ottoman expansion all around the Byzantine slash Eastern Roman Empire, the Ottomans surrounded the remains of the old empire, which was now effectively a city-state consisting of Constantinople and a few other scattered territories. Since their initial founding in 1299, the Ottomans had moved their capital a few times already from Söz, down to Bursa, and then over to Adrianople, now known as Adirne, and now looked at Constantinople, presumably thinking it would be an awesome city to have as capital. And so, without going into too many details for which I should absolutely make a future video about, Constantinople was conquered after years of siege, decades of previous Ottoman attempts, and over a thousand years of attempts in general. The city was made the new and final capital of the Ottoman Empire, the famous Hagia Sophia was turned into a mosque, hence the minarets, and the city was not actually renamed. Yet, the Ottoman Empire ruled these lands and expanded into surrounding lands for over 500 years afterwards, but by the 19th century, it would eventually be given the nickname the Sick Man of Europe, as its foundations started to weaken and province after province started to gradually break away, even if only to become part of France and Britain's colonial empires. Shortly after the turn of the 20th century, Europe set itself on fire in what would be known as World War I, in which the Ottomans joined what would turn out to be the losing side. At the end of the war, British troops made their way into Constantinople and the Ottoman Empire was confined to the borders that make up modern Turkey, and then split up amongst the victorious powers after the Treaty of Sevres. The treaty was signed in 1920, between said victorious powers and the Ottoman Empire, now further confining Ottoman control to this part of northern Anatolia, with this part going to Greece, this part to Italy, this part to France, this part to the UK, this part to Armenia, this part to Georgia, and the area around the Bosphorus, Sea of Marmara, and the Dardanelles being declared an international zone. Looking at these borders, however, one thing people probably weren't thinking was, yeah, sure, that'll work perfectly fine. And, well, to be fair, it wasn't really intended to. And it didn't work perfectly fine, as it almost immediately escalated the Turkish War of Independence. The conflict had already been underway for the past couple years, as Allied forces had already occupied parts of Turkey previously, but disagreement about the treaty effectively split the Turkish government into two camps. The old imperial government based in Constantinople, who had agreed to the terms, and the Turkish national movement, established just a few months prior in Ankara, then still known in the west as Angora or Ansira, and who fought against the Allied powers to restore their borders in an incredibly complex war that Jabzi already made a good video on. In summary though, Greece was basically the only power that actually really truly fought the Turkish resistance, as Italy pulled out almost immediately due to disputes with Greece, Russia allied with the movement to establish a puppet state in Armenia, and France basically didn't want to fight a war like Greece was and so decided, screw this, we're out. The Turkish national movement was essentially an amalgamation of various different Turkish revolutionary forces, with one especially prominent figure being Mustafa Kemal who of course would later adopt the honorific surname Ataturk, meaning father of the Turks. Looking at his legacy in modern Turkey, this might seem like a apt title, and not just because his face is on all the money. The Ottoman Empire was a very different country from the Republic of Turkey that we know today, as modern Turkey is now way more secular and westernized, largely due to efforts from this guy, with his new government being a strictly secular one, 
even going so far as to ban traditional dress for a time, just to use some somewhat polarizing examples. In fact, he even changed the writing system used by the Turkish language from a modified form of Arabic to a modified Latin alphabet, and even brought back old Turkic words for various administrative purposes, for which they had previously used loan words from Arabic and Persian. The Treaty of Lausanne was signed in July 1923, and the new Republic of Turkey was proclaimed on the 29th of October 1923, with Ataturk as its first president. One matter that also needed to be addressed though, other than religion and language, was which city was to be the capital of this new republic. Although around this time Constantinople was officially renamed to Istanbul, to Ataturk, the city simply didn't spark joy as a capital for his new republic. The largest reason for this was because Istanbul had already been the capital of the old sultanate, meaning that situating the new republic's capital back in Istanbul would essentially seem like a symbol that nothing had really changed. That wasn't the only reason though, since keep in mind the city had also hosted the headquarters of Ataturk's resistance movement. In fact, the movement originally started in the eastern city of Erzurum, but quickly moved to Ankara seeing as it was, to state yet another reason for its selection as capital, a big city smack dab in the center of Turkey. Today, Istanbul is still Turkey's largest city and an incredibly important hub for finance, trade, tourism, and basically anything else a country would need a hub for, as well as a strategic location for NATO, of which Turkey is of course a member. Ankara, however, has seen a massive population boom, now taking the place as Turkey's second largest city at over 5 million people. Nowhere near Istanbul's 15 million, but definitely not nothing to sneeze at. Of course, there's a lot of stuff I wasn't able to cover in the short lengths of this video, but there's one place you can learn all the history you would ever want to learn about. Sponsor time! Of course, modern day Turkey sits on a piece of land filled with history going back thousands of years. If you want to go back a little further in time, I would strongly recommend you watch the documentary Bronze Age, available on CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream, if you aren't familiar, is a subscription streaming service that features some of the best, highest quality educational documentaries out there. CuriosityStream has been a sponsor of the channel for a couple months now, and you may have noticed that in every spot, I make sure to recommend a brand new documentary that I have not mentioned in a previous video. Something I found trivially easy with their selection of thousands of documentaries on history, science, culture, politics, and virtually any other general interest you might have. To get access to this amazing library and help support the channel, simply go to the link below or go to curiositystream.com slash Canubis and use the promo code Canubis at checkout. From there, you will get a one month free trial on a service that's already incredibly cheap. A monthly plan costs you $2.99 per month and a yearly plan costs $19.99 for, well, an entire year for all the amazing documentaries you could ever want to watch. Thanks for watching. As you might be able to tell, I went to Istanbul last week and obviously had a great time there. It's one of my favorite cities I've ever visited. Speaking of which, thanks to my friend Bielgave for helping me review the script, at the very least so I wouldn't make a complete ass of myself talking about our country. As always, be sure to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to learn something new every Sunday.